I am to interview a patient and I'd like to give you some thumbnail sketch of what Gestalt therapy stands for. Uh, gestalt therapy is working on an equation. Awareness equal present time equal reality. In contrast to depth psychology, we try to get hold of the obvious, of the surface, of the situation in which we find ourselves and to develop the emerging gestalt strictly on the I and thou, here and now basis. Any escape into the future or the past is examined as a likely resistance against the ongoing encounter. A modern man has alienated, given up so much of his potential that his ability to cope with his existence becomes badly impoverished. My aim is this. The patient should recover his lost potential. He should integrate the conflicting polarities, understand the difference between game playing, especially the playing of verbal games, on the one hand, and of genuine, authentic, beha confident behavior on the other. The civil war of inner conflicts weakens the efficiency and comfort of the patient, but every bit of integration will strengthen it. Now, in the safe emergency of the therapeutic situation, I repeat, in the safe emergency of the therapeutic situation, the patient begins to take risks and to transform his energies from manipulating the environment for support into developing greater and greater self-support that is reliance on his own resources. This process is called maturation. Once the patient has learned to stand on his own feet, emotionally, intellectually, and economically, his need for therapy will collapse. He will wake up from the nightmare of his existence. The basic technique is this. Not to explain things to the patient, but to provide the patient with opportunities to understand and to discover himself. For this purpose, I manipulate and frustrate the patient in such a way that he's confronting himself. In this process, he identifies with his lost potential, for instance, through assimilating his projections by acting out, by acting out the alien parts of himself. Principally, I consider any interpretation to be a therapeutic mistake as this would imply that the therapist understands the patient better than the patient himself. Takes away from the patient a chance of discovering himself, by himself, and prevents him from finding out his own values and style. On the other hand, I disregard most of the content of what the patient says and concentrate most on the non-verbal level as this is the only which, only one which is less subject to self-deception than his verbal pseudo-self-expression. On the non-verbal level, the relevant gestalt will always emerge and can dealt with in the here and now. We are going to have an interview for half an hour. Right away, I'm scared. You say you're scared, but you're smiling. I don't understand how one can be scared and smile at the same time. And I'm also suspicious of you. I think you understand very well. I think you know that... When I get scared, I laugh or I kid to cover up. <laughs> but do you have stage fright? Uh, I don't know. You I'm mostly stage? aware of you. I'm afraid that uh, I'm afraid you're going to have such a direct attack that uh, you're going to get me in the corner, and I'm afraid of it. I want you to be more on my you side. You I get you in your corner, and you put your hand on your chest. Mm -hmm. Is this your corner? Well, it's like 
Yeah, it's like I'm afraid, you know. Where would you like to go? Can you describe the corner you like to go to? Yeah, uh, it's back in the corner where, where I'm completely protected. And where you would be safe of me, for me? Well, I know I wouldn't really. Well, but it feels safer. This, yes. Well, imagine you were in this corner, and you're perfectly safe now. What would you do in that corner? I just sit. Just, uh, just sit. Yes. No. Uh, how long would you sit? I don't know, but this is so funny as you're saying this. This reminds me of when I was a little girl. Every time I was afraid, I'd feel better sitting in a corner. Okay, you're panicky. Little, are you a little girl? Well, no, but it's the same feeling. Are you a little girl? This feeling reminds me of it. Are you no. a little girl? No, no, no. No, at last. How old are you? Thirty. Then you're not a little girl. No. Okay. So you're thirty year old girl who's afraid of a guy like me. Well, I don't even know if I'm... I, yeah, I do know I'll be afraid of you. you. I get real defensive with you. Now, what can I do to you? You can't do anything, but I can sure feel dumb. And I can feel stupid for not having the right answers. Now, what would it do for you to be, feel dumb and stupid? I hate it when I'm stupid. What would it do for you to be dumb and stupid? Let put it so like this. What would it do to me if you would play dumb and stupid? It makes you all the smarter and all the higher above me. Then I really have to look up to you because oh. you're so smart. Yeah. Oh yeah. You butter me up right and left. No, I think you can do that all by yourself. Oh. I think the other way around. If you play dumb and stupid, you force me to be more explicit. That's been said to me before, but I don't buy it. I don't know. Really what are you doing with your feet now? Wiggling. <laughs> What's a joke now? Oh, I'm afraid you're going to notice everything I do. Gee. Don't I you don't, want me? I, I want you to help me become more relaxed, yes. I don't want to be so defensive with you. I don't like to feel so defensive. like you're treating me as if I'm stronger than I am and I want you to protect me more and be nicer to me. Are you aware of your smile? You don't believe a word what you <laughs> I do too, but I know you're going to pick on me for it. <laughs> sure, you're bluff, you're phony. Do you believe, you're meaning that seriously? Yeah. If you see you're afraid and you laugh and you giggle and you squirm, it's phony. You put in a performance for me. Oh, I I resent that very much. Can you express it? Yes, sir. I most certainly am not being phony. I, I will admit this. It's hard for me to show my embarrassment, and I hate to be embarrassed. But, boy, I resent you calling me a phony. Just because I smile when I'm embarrassed or I'm put in a corner doesn't mean I'm being a phony. Wonderful. Thank you. You didn't smile for the last minute. Well, I'm mad at you. That's, I. Uh, that's right. You didn't have to cover up your anger with your smile. Now, you, in that moment, in that minute, you were not a fool. Well, at that minute, I was mad, though. I wasn't embarrassed. In other words, when you're mad, you're not a phony. I still resent that. I'm not Do a phony when I'm nervous. Again. I, I want to get mad at you. I, I, you know what I'd like to I, do? I, 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 I want you on my level so I can pick on you just as much as you're picking on me. Okay, pick on me. I have to wait till the, you say something that I can pick on, but... What does this mean? Can you develop this movement? It's, uh, I can't find words. I want to... Develop this, as if you were dancing. <laughs> I want to start all over again with you. Okay, let's start all over. I know a corner I'd like to put you on. I'd like to ask you a question, and, and because I have a feeling you don't like me right off the bat, and I want to know if you do. Can you... Now play Fritz Perls not liking Gloria. What would he say? He'd say that she's a phony, for one. So you are a phony. You're a phony, and you're a flip little girl, and you're a show-off. What would Gloria answer to that? I, I, I know what 
that answer, I'd say I think you are too. <laughs>